What's shaking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Improv Tabletop. It's not an RPG thing this time. I mean, you saw the title of the episode. You know we're doing Sonic again. You know we're getting wild and weird with that sweet, fast little needle mouse boy. So now, uh, as we get into this, we're going to play a little game called Can Ned Remember Everything That Happened in the Last Episode for a recap. Uh, Sonic and Tails woke up. There was a weird tractor thing that was creating a road in the middle of the forest. So they went to try and stop what was happening. They met up with Robotnik and he tricked them into getting teleported into a different zone because the zones are a big thing here in the Sonic world. And they found themselves in this jungle type zone where they made friends with some warthogs who needed to uh, kill their terrible, terrible enemies. They teamed up with them. They busted into the complex and uh, they beat up a whole bunch of crocodiles and they found themselves, uh, there was a place where they knew, maybe, they maybe knew that there were some prisoners stuck in that place. So they went to bust it open. They only lost one warthog along the way, but they managed to break inside. What are they going to find inside of this uh, holding cell, whatever place? Let's find out here in the world of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Adventure Game Book 2, Zone Rangers by James Wallace. ba da ba ba do Sonic and the Warthogs smash down the stockade gates. Inside, tied up, are three more Warthogs and Tails. What the <gasps> heck? What? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm guessing we were really only supposed to go this way if we knew what was happening. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. But you well. know, James Wallace, you just told us that there was somebody we needed to save, so we knew here we are. We have two tails now. <laughs> yes. Sonic was just not paying attention and didn't notice that tails got kidnapped. Yeah. For real. <laughs> Sonic pulls the ropes off him. Are you okay, Tails? He says worriedly. Tails smiles. Sonic, he says. Boy, am I glad to see you. <laughs> the two friends rush out of the stockade and over to the main fort, turn to page 214. Man, it's a good thing that we saved Tails because uh, we would have been in a bad shape trying to attack this fort. Yeah. Well, I mean, we never lost him. <laughs> shh! Don't tell well, James we just that. Did... Yeah, oh, shh. God. Right, right. Sorry. It's okay, James. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're a master storyteller. We love you. <laughs> I mean, Christian and I, both of our middle names are James, so together Whoa. we are the James. The James is James yes. squared. The fort has battlements on top of it, from which crocodiles are raining rotten fruit down onto the warthogs below. There's a solid door in the front of the building, and most of the guards are concentrating their fire there, keeping the invaders away from it. There's a strange greenish glow coming from the windows around the bottom of the building, and it gives Sonic a peculiar prickling feeling all the way down his back. Should Sonic and Tails throw something at the crocodiles to distract their attention, look for another way in, or charge the main door with spin attacks? Spinning sounds fast. Yeah. I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. Anybody? Star Wars Episode One. Nobody. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought that was just something uh, Sonic said. Now I get it now. <laughs> anyway, attack when I shout three. Sonic says three. Spinning blue and orange balls hurtle towards the front of the fort, and it explodes into sawdust. Okay, we don't even have to roll for it. There Jeez. we go. Sonic and Tails unwrap themselves and stand in the hallway of the building. There's a staircase leading up and down, and under it is a heap of strange objects with two power-up monitors on it. Tails grabs them. Look, he shouts, this one's got ten rings in it. And the other's got, oh wow, a blue power shield, the kind that protects the wearer from one injury. Cool. Which one do you want, Sonic? Now we get to choose uh, who of the two gets the shield and who gets the ten rings. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing that I've noticed about uh, Sonic games. If you get hit once, that's all your rings every time, right? Correct. So it doesn't matter how many rings you have. Unless you have a blue shield. Unless you lose mm -hmm. it. So Sonic should get the blue shield because if Tails goes, he's just not as good as Sonic anyway. I'm pretty sure if Sonic fails, everybody fails. If Tails fails, eh. Sonic can still go on. Yeah, he'll just need to go to therapy a little. Well, the rules do say that, so each of us has three lives, and if either of these little delightful little boys end up at zero lives, then we have to start back at the beginning, mm. or in this case, start making sacrifices to Bahamut. Uh -huh. Okay, 
Sonic well, tends to be on the front lines of things. Let's give him the blue shield and Tails the money. Agreed. Tails yeah, is yeah. at 15 coins. Right on. Sonic has a blue shield. Beautiful. I feel better already, says Sonic. Where to now? Do we go up the stairs or down the stairs? I mean, I feel like we can go faster if we go down. It's true. Gravity is on our side. Gravity. Oh, and they have the flubber in the basement. Let's check out the flubber. All right. <laughs> Page 296. Maybe I'll meet Robin Williams. Yeah. The stairs lead to an underground space glowing with an unearthly light. There are hooks all over the walls with crossbows hung on them, although there is no sign of any ammunition. At the far side of the room are three things which grab the hero's attention. There's a large machine that looks like the teleporter that sent them here. There's a large chaos emerald. What? What? <laughs> and there's a very large crocodile holding the chaos emerald. Wow. Is it? Okay. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Okay. If crocodiles choose their chief by which of them has the most teeth and the meanest expression, this guy won by a distance. Tails nudges Sonic. I say we go for the teleport, he says. No way, exclaims Sonic. We've got to get the emerald back. It must be leaking chaos, which has made all these crocodiles so warlike. Remember what the warthog leader told us? Tails nods. So what do we do now? He asks. Good question. If you think the two heroes should attack the crocodile immediately, turn to blah blah blah, or should they stay out of his range and insult him, or should they try being friendly <laughs> to him? Ah, uh, let's get that chaos emerald. Attack immediately. That sounds like the fastest oh, option. Oh yeah, that's well. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's pounce him. All right, page one fifty three. The two rush forward, but before they are close enough to hit the chieftain, bolts of fierce green light burst from the emerald. Sonic and Tails must each roll in their quick wits to beat an eight to dodge the beams of light. Oh boy. Ooh, baby. What? What's my wits? Your quick wits is three, and Sonic, your quick wits is three. So okay. each of you needs to roll a five or a six. Nice, I got a three. <laughs> <laughs> I got a five. Ew. All right, so Tails, you're good to go. If either of them fail, the beams hit them and they lose their gold rings. If they have no rings, they do not lose a life. The beam fades away, leaving spots flashing before their eyes. If they want to... Okay, so in this instance, based on just sonic rules, I would imagine that we lose our blue shield instead of losing our rings. Bless I. The beam fades away, leaving spots flashing before their eyes. If they want to stay out of range and insult the chieftain, turn to 56. <laughs> if they want to be nice to him, turn to 4. Yeah, let's call him a let's call him a lizard. A lizard boy. Mm, I don't know. It might be funny to insult him. It might be. <laughs> yeah, let's... Mm. All right. <laughs> Let's call him slow. Nice. Okay, 56. Hey, scaly face, Sonic shouts. We thought warthogs were ugly, but you take the biscuit in the grossness steaks. The biscuit? Yeah. <laughs> you Got take him. the biscuit in the grossness steaks. Oh my gosh. Also, he just brutalized his buddies. <laughs> like what, Sonic? I am, I am also going to permanently change that as like my email sign off. <laughs> <laughs> oh well yeah tails adds you need something to give you smoother skin like sandpaper or a mask sonic taunts the only way babes would want to be close to skin like yours is if you made it in a bag oh man my gosh. sonic's wow. a bully i know the implications of this just being an animal-based society <laughs> that's brutal mm -hmm. <laughs> and the chieftain replies Grow a war! Oh, yeah. Okay, we need to roll on Sonic and Tails' combined coolness scores to be a difficulty of eight to see how angry they have made the chieftain. Okay, our combined coolness is six, so we just need a two or higher. Sonic's the cool one. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> okay, we got a four, boys. We got a four. Nice. If they succeed, turn to page 112. Oh, if we had failed, there was always the opportunity to attack him instead or no. to be polite and friendly with him. I feel like James Wallace wants us to do something here. Be polite and friendly? <laughs> if we were polite and friendly, we'd miss out on some of the best writing in this whole stinking book. <laughs> oh, man. It's difficult for a crocodile to go red in the face, but this one manages it. He looks around for a weapon, but there's nothing nearby, and Sonic and Tails are keeping out of range. Wild with rage, he hurls the chaos emerald at them, and oh, Sonic no. catches it. Look at us. Yeah, Look at us. Thank you, he shouts, Ding. and dives for the teleporter. As he reaches it, he is surrounded by the familiar white light. Tails jumps into the beam, and a moment later, fuzz, turn to page 229. I do want to point out that we just abandoned those warthog tribes. We'll we figure it out. In the middle of a raid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be Zam! Sonic appears above the largest white bed he's ever seen. Actually, it's a cloud, as soon as he realizes when he falls through oh. it. Whoa! <laughs> he screams as he plummets downwards. Far below him is the ground, but it's getting closer very fast. 
He's falling towards a large city with tall buildings and high walls. Outside the city, everything is a deserted desert. You don't say, a deserted desert. Oh, Nothing wow. stirs out there. Sonic can shout for tails, roll into a ball to soften the impact of landing, or he can quickly make a parachute out of the leafy clothes the warthogs gave him. Well, <laughs> that was quick. Um, yeah, let's be quick. We gotta quickly it. do that. Uh, turn to page 16. <laughs> With his speed slowed, Sonic can change his direction when he's falling. Below him, he can see what looks like a pool of water on top of a building. Just the thing for a safe landing. He yep. twists in the air and falls towards it. Ah! He screams as he realizes that's not a pool of water, but a huge sheet of glass. Oh, Desperately, no. he tries to steer away from it, but he's too close. There is a colossal CRASH, uh, spelled in all caps with two of each letter. Interesting. As he hits the glass, and it shatters into billions of pieces which fall with him into the room below. Billions? Yeah. I, I feel wow. like... The amount, the, the size that this sheet of glass would have to be for it to disintegrate into billions of pieces is pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Now you see, there's a party going on in the room, or there was until Sonic dropped in. <laughs> Nobody was hurt, but all the guests are covered with broken glass, and the food is filled with shards and splinters. How is nobody hurt? It's a, it's a miracle. There's billions of pieces of glass. <laughs> Sonic pulls himself out of a huge sponge cake and looks up. There is no noise apart from the tinkling of a few final fragments of glass. Everyone in the room is looking at him, and they all seem to be large cats. What should he do? Should he be cool about it? Should he offer them the Chaos Emerald as a gift? Or should he attack the most important looking person? There? What? Uh, I will there, remind there... us. Sonic's coolness is his second best stat. Let's do it. Let's play it cool. All right. Turn to page 110. Good thing we're so cool. Sonic sits up in the sticky cake and wonders how he can bluff his way out of this equally sticky situation. Roll on his coolness to beat a seven. So we just need to roll a three or higher. Come on, Sonic. Be cool. Whee! That's six, boys. Oh, we're yeah, so boy. cool. We're so cool. All right. So if we succeed, go to page 171. I'm trying to like follow the thread of this book. It sounds I have like no the, idea where it's taking. I us. know what's happening. We are in one of Tails' dreams. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> if that is legitimately what happens, I will buy you the RPG book of your choice. <laughs> Amazing! Amazing! <laughs> All right. Hi there, Sonic grins. This is a most excellent cake. Delicious. My compliments to the chef. It's traditional for people to jump out of big cakes at big parties, so I thought I'd do something alternative, like jumping into a cake. It's different, it's hip, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> and I enjoyed Most it. Most importantly, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. What a monologue. <laughs> right? <laughs> Are you an outcast? Asks an impressively dressed cat person. Sonic is sure that being an outcast is bad. Wow. That, what, a, what a lesson to teach to young, impressionable youths. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm new, he says. I've just arrived. I like it here. Great cakes. I think I'll stay a while. <laughs> we'll just perform an immigration ritual we have here, says the impressive cat, then raises his voice. Guards, grab him! <laughs> Two huge cats grab Sonic by the arms and haul him out of the cake. The Chaos Emerald drops to the floor, and they pick it up and pass it to the impressive cat. Oh. Turn to page 69. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. <laughs> so he was going to get that He was gonna get that emerald no matter what. We should have just yeah. killed the cat when we had the chance. Yeah, attack the most important. <laughs> the cats rearrange the tables and chairs to make a semicircle. In the middle sits the impressive cat holding the Chaos Emerald, which sparkles and flashes with subdued energy, and Sonic held by the two guards. The cat strides over to Sonic. I am Galen, High Judge and Commander of Scrap Brain City. <laughs> yes, you heard that correctly. Scrap Brain City. Okay. Hmm. You have broken into our banquet, probably on a mission of destruction, without an invitation, and improperly dressed. You, Sonic the whatever you are, are accused of being an outcast spy. We know they have spies in our city because our agents have infiltrated them and tell me their every move. Do you plead innocent or guilty? He stares at Sonic. Well, plead no low. We plead no low. This is our first offense. We can do that. <laughs> uh, I'm probably innocent, actually. All right. Let's turn to page seven. I'm innocent. I've only just arrived, and I've never heard of the outcasts, replies Sonic. A likely story, Galen says. 
I submit before the court two crucial pieces of evidence. One, he holds out the Chaos Emerald, this Chaos Emerald, remarkably similar to the one which powers our own city. This one may be a fake, or it may be genuine, but one thing is certain, it should not be in the possession of the spy! All the cats applaud. Now, the second piece of evidence, continues Galen. I ask you to cast your eyes over this invading reprobate. What do you see, fellow citizens? There is a certain cat-like appearance to him, but he is blue! <laughs> As we all know, only <laughs> mutants are blue, and all <laughs> mutants are outcasts here. Guilty as charged. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we need to dismantle this society what? from the ground up. Yeah, this is bad news. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Guards, take him away. Oh, dear, are... the book says. <laughs> oh, dear. 259. Ooh, boy. The cats applaud as the guards drag Sonic from the courtroom <laughs> down a long corridor to a small cell. They hurl him in and slam the door. The cell is bleak. There is a small window with bars in it, a small bed which looks very hard, and the door which is made of steel. Previous prisoners have scratched messages into the stone wall. The outcasts will win. Watch out for Galen, he's tricky. I wish I had a get out of jail free card. <laughs> At the top of the wall is a large sign that reads, defacing the wall is punishable by death. <laughs> oh my gosh, no! <laughs> Wait, is Taylor just like with Sonic? No, no. No? So <laughs> <laughs> We're all alone by ourselves. What happened to Tails? Did he just get left back with a crocodile? So. No, he... Oh man, this is, well, we had the opportunity to try and catch up with Tails as we were falling, but we had to go fast, you know? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. The guy who made a Monopoly joke probably hung for that. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh, but here's another great little joke. Someone has crossed out defacing the wall and written underneath it, anything Galen doesn't like. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, man. What should Sonic examine? The window, the bed, or the door? The window. We should see if we can mm. see our buddy Tails. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I want to suggest real quick is two of these are obvious like portals out of the room. The bed might have something special hidden underneath it. That Let's is a good a call. Good, smart design. You've obviously built dungeons before. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's maybe make a prison shank out of the bedpost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Turn to page 83. The bed is as uncomfortable as it looks, with only one blanket on it. Suddenly, Sonic realizes the only place to hide anything in this cell would be under the bed. Look yeah. at you. He kneels on the floor and feels around, and yes, there's something under there. He pulls out three gold rings. Woo! Way to go, Sonic. Way to go. Write those down. Then realizes the part of the floor is wobbly, so perhaps something could be hidden under it. Sonic slides under the bed, lifts the loose flagstone, and moves forward to see what is there. Whoa! He's rolling out of control down a stone chute that twists, turns, and bumps him until he's dizzy and bruised. So, turns out this was the way out. Okay. okay. <laughs> smart net is smart. Suddenly, he rockets out the end of the chute into a small room and into a group of animals who spring back and draw wicked-looking swords ready to attack. Turn to page 123. Meanwhile, over on the other side of Mobius, Tails is buried up to his waist in a snowdrift. Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Unfortunately, he's upside down, so his head is in the snow and his feet are waving in the air. What a humorous little image. <laughs> a moment ago, he materialized a meter above the snowdrift, and you can work out the rest yourself. Sonic, he shouts, his voice muffled by snow. Sonic, where are you? He listens for any reply. There's no trace of Sonic's voice. Not surprising, since he's in Scrap Brain City, but Tails can hear shouts and the sound of a fight. If you think Tails should burrow into the snow so the fighters can't see him, turn to 240. Otherwise, we can investigate what's happening, or we can join in the fight. I mean, well, this this is Buff Tails. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's fight. Let's get him. Buff Tails knows how to hold his own in a scrap. Mm -hmm. Who said that? Tails asks, looking around nervously. <laughs> He pulls himself out of the snowdrift, brushes the snow off his fur, and rushes towards the fighting. He can see a group of figures, possibly monkeys, but he's not sure, standing on the edge of the ice and jabbing with spears at something large and gray in the water beyond. They look very aggressive. Should he attack the figures, attack the thing in the water, or go and look around for a teleporter device? I like that we've been teleporting around. Zone hopping is the term in the Sonic universe. Oh, mm -hmm. is that how we find the alternate versions of ourselves? I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> that does seem like a good way to find Sonic as well, because like the book has said, he's in Scrap Brain City, which is still a wild name for a place. 
I know it really is. Um, yeah, maybe we just not our not our circus, not our monkeys. You know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're gonna. That was a very good one, and you would know because you are Mayor Brimpus. <laughs> I am closely related to monkey. All right. Page 145. There's no sign of a teleporter. Great. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a tremendous crash, and Tails whirls to see that a robot shark has smashed through the ice and has gripped a small <laughs> monkey in its metal jaws. What? Do we attack no. the shark or the monkeys? We uh. hate metal because that's Robotnik. Metal bad. Yeah. As we learned in the previous book, nothing metal is a friend of Sonic's. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to turn to page 268. I just want to say, like, as I've been flipping through, I've seen a lot of game over endings, and we have not hit any of them, so we're doing pretty darn good. I'm, yeah. I'm a little shocked. I know, yeah. for real. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to jinx it, because Bahamut is a uh, mighty deity with high demands, but... Mm -hmm. Tails dashes across the ice, spinning like a gyroscope, and smacks into the side of the shark. With a metallic roar, it drops the monkey it was holding and turns to snap its huge jaws at the furry fighting fox. Tails will use his speed to fight the shark. It has oh. a rating of 12. Oh, oh, oh boy. Is that even possible? <laughs> Tails' speed is 2, but, 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 Tails can add one point for each of the monkeys who are also fighting it, and there oh are gosh. four of them. So his attack is his speed, plus the die roll, plus four. So really it's going to be, six. A, we have to roll a six. Oh, and oh, I'm boy. rolling for Tails? Yes, you yep. are. <sighs> At least it's possible. Well, Tails, Tails has coins, or, or he, has, he has gold rings right now, right? He didn't lose them in the he fall? He does, yes. He's got like 15, yeah. No! Fell off the table. Doesn't All count, right. doesn't count. Get a nice clean one. Take two. Oh, it's a five. <laughs> no! Oh. Okay. If the shark hits him, roll the die again. Okay. I'm rolling the die again. Now it's a six. Okay. On a four, five, or six, one of the monkeys is hit and knocked out of the fight. Oh, no. Monkey, Don't add no. a point for a monkey once it's been knocked out. So at this point... It's impossible. We, we, we literally cannot beat the shark at this point. Uh, what were you saying about the game over? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. so let, let me let me do some quick math here. So if we fail and we eventually lose all of the monkeys, then we're going to lose all our rings. And if we have no rings left, we have to lose a life. So mm -hmm. basically at this point, we're just going to have to lose a life because there's no way that we can kill this shark. There's no option yep. to run away. There's no option to run away. Such is life. Such is minus one life. Oh, no Woo. tails. Being strong was uh, not the best idea, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to turn back to page 123. Ah, we were doing so good. We were doing so, so good. Okay, so now we're back in the snow. Do we burrow into the snow so the fighters can't see us? Do we investigate what's happening or do we join the fight? Dang, man. Uh, is there a way out of this? Let's burrow? baby burrow in the Let's snow? Burrow? That's, yeah. I guess, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, w the mood has changed significantly yeah. <laughs> at this moment. Okay. Who said that? Asks Tails to the thin air. Who told me to dig further down? We did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But he does until his paws hit something cold and solid. A sheet of solid ice under the snow. He can feel it shaking as something very large hits it. And then there's a cracking noise and it splits. The snowbank oh shakes and falls into the freezing water that wells up from underneath, and Tails finds himself in bright sunlight, sitting on a chunk of ice drifting out to sea away from the mainland. Ooh boy. Tails hmm. stands up and looks around. He can see a group of small creatures at the edge of the land. They're wearing thick coats and brandishing weapons at a large shape that moves slowly under the water towards them. Suddenly it surfaces, throwing a huge splash of water into the air, and Tails can see that it is a shark. The sunlight reflecting off the snow may be playing tricks on his eyes, but it looks as if it's made entirely of metal. Does Tails jump back towards the shore or stay on the ice flow? I mean, he's just going to kill us again. I guess <laughs> yeah. we got to go back to the monkeys and hope for a six, dang it. Wait, no, if well, we stay on the ice flow, then he just doesn't touch us. That's true. Stay away from the shark is my personal vote. My vote I is like to that. stay away from the shark. <laughs> okay, yes. 103. The shark doesn't notice the ice flow with its passenger, but the figures on the shore do, and they wave at Tails. Jump, they shout, or it'll melt. Jump. Tails shakes his head. He's made up his mind. And he can't no. <laughs> and he can't see how such a large chunk of ice could melt so quickly that he couldn't jump off of it in time. 
When the ice does melt a few seconds later, very suddenly, Tails is most surprised to be dropping into the freezing water below. By the time he's stopped being surprised and started swimming to the surface, the huge shape of the metal shark is already swooping down towards him. There's a single gulp and a robotic burp and that's it. Game over. What? Oh, come on. I have no. to basically, I ha okay, okay. So I have to roll a perfect six. That's the only way for this to go. Kind of. Boom. My heck. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, well. so we're going to... Now, it just says game over. It doesn't say lose a life and go back to another starting point. It says but, game over. <laughs> but you know what? Heck that. Heck that. Heck that. We're just going to lose a life. Tails, you got one chance left. Okay, so we know what's going to happen. I'm just going to roll the die, and if it's a six, all is well. If it's not... I feel like I have to take the punishment because I've been rolling for tails. Okay, well, we do also have the opportunity of investigating what's happening instead of joining the fight or burrowing into the snow. I personally Let's try believe the that if we investigate, it will just be an extra step until we have to join, but yeah. I'm down to investigate. I'm holding on to some kind of vain hope here. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's like a gun on the ground or something. Who said that, asks Tails. Who told me to investigate? Sonic, was that you? <laughs> There is no answer. <laughs> he turns himself right way up, digs his way out of the snow, and heads off towards the source of the noises. Tails doesn't have to go far until he sees something. He ducks behind another snowbank so that he isn't spotted and peers out. There's a group of figures all wearing warm coats and carrying primitive weapons, standing on the edge of an ice field and looking out over the open water beyond at something large, gray, and metallic, which is bumping its head against the ice. It could be trying to smash the ice to attack the figures, or it could be trapped there. What should Tails do? We have five options. Oh, man. Porfine. Okay. All right. Do we keep watching the figures? Do we look for a teleporter device? Do we shout to the small figures? Do we attack the small figures? Or do we attack the shape under the ice? It, we shout is probably the best think, option. I think shout. Tell them to get away from that big old shark and, and help just us run away. That's the idea that I like. Page 62. Hey, shouts Tails. Hey. <laughs> who are you and what are you fighting? <laughs> The figures on the shore look up to see who is shouting. Tails duck behind the snowbank so they don't see him. Oh, wait, no. Tails ducks behind. Okay, not the monkey's tails. I thought the monkey's tails. Miles Tails Prower, the fox, ducks behind a snowbank <laughs> so that the monkeys don't see him. Hey, he hears in return. We're monkeys from the hilltop zone looking for our friends. Help us fight this monster. <laughs> Tails knows that if he shouts again, he'll give away his position, so that's a bad idea. Instead, he can look for a teleporter device help the monkeys or attack them. Kill. Okay, Kill the I will monkeys. roll the die because we know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay, like so we're going to help the monkeys turn to page 168. Shark fight in time. <sighs> <sighs> Gotta be a six. Gotta be a six. I'm so sad. That one that fell off very first, I didn't even see what it was and it fell at an angle into the little pocket on the side of my desk. So... <sighs> It's probably a six. The fates will never know, but that one was <laughs> a five, and this one is a five. Ah! There is no power of the dice. Okay, there is, there is, I think, potentially one more option we could take. Let me... Uh, I'm, I'm grasping at straws here. Grasping at straws. <laughs> Throw in an extra monkey. <laughs> okay, so monkey. if we investigate... <laughs> If we investigate, we go to page 283. We know that looking for the teleporter device isn't going to work. We know that shouting at the figures isn't going to work. We know that attacking the shape under the ice is going to be bad. We can either attack the monkeys, at which point we would probably leave ourselves open for the shark, or we can just keep watching and not draw any attention to ourselves. What if we keep watching? Let's do that. Let's just you keep You guys watching. got this. Get your monkeys. Okay, page 225. Please, 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 please. Okay, the battle isn't going well for the figures on the shore. After watching for a while, Tails has, Tails has worked out they are monkeys. They keep jabbing spears at the big gray shape and it stays just out of their range. As the gray shape cruises out from under the ice, a brave monkey dashes to the edge and thrusts its spear deep into the water. The shape rears high into the air and Tails sees that it is a huge shark made entirely of metal. It grabs the monkey in its metal jaws. Does Tails dash in to attack the robot shark? Or does he attack the monkeys? Okay, let's see what happens if I attack the monkeys. Let's attack the monkeys, because that's the only option that we Die, don't know. Tails dashes in to attack, and the figures turn in surprise. Look, it's Tails, shouts one of them. Wow, Sonic's pal Tails? Wow, replies another. Tails sees their monkeys, half frozen with the cold. He screeches to a halt, slipping a little in the ice. 
It is, Tails the Monkey continues. Fantastic, he'll save us. Although Sonic would have been better. Is he here, Tails? Oh, no, <laughs> my he's... goodness. Wow. Uh, I mean, we should kill these monkeys. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not, the fox responds crossly. But I can do anything he can. What's your problem? That's the problem, says the monkey, pointing. With a splash, a huge metal machine shaped like a shark surfaces in the open water. Do we help the monkeys by attacking the shark, or do we look around for a teleporter device? Hey, guys, I think I just have to do a bad thing. I think I just have to take the punishment, and we have to go back. <laughs> I mean, I want to look for a teleporter device, uh, but that's just going to lead us either to... Okay, we have to attack the shark. I just rolled. Yeah? I got a six. Yeah! Oh, Ooh, baby. Ooh, okay. I am furious. Because okay. <laughs> it doesn't All even right. count anymore. <laughs> so, well, th that does mean that at this point, I don't have to eat a habanero on one of our hangout streams quite yet. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> oh, boy. So, okay. Sonic still has all of his lives. Tails has lost all three of his lives. So Sonic, he can die as much as we want him to die to a certain extent, but we got to keep Tails safe. Tails is our precious, sweet little boy, <laughs> and we can not, we can let nothing wrong happen to him. <laughs> so we have finally killed the shark. It sinks into the water and disappears. Ooh boy! Turn to page forty-two. Furious. The monkeys crowd around Tails and thank him. You are excellent, they say. You're as good as people say. We wish we could see Sonic in action too. Oh my gosh. You ungrateful. Just say thank you and leave it alone. We died three times to save your yeah. Tails. Uh. <laughs> well, this is sort of a solo mission, says Tails. You haven't seen Sonic then? No, says one of the monkeys. We haven't seen much since we woke up this morning. Only the snow and ice everywhere. It's very confusing. What does Tails ask the monkey? Do we ask, where are we? Who are you? Or have we seen a Chaos Emerald? I feel like we're going to have thing... to go through all three of them just asking things. So, yeah. mm -hmm. One quick consolation I will offer is the illustration with this very beat up shark does show that all of the monkeys are asking Tails for his autograph. Oh, Aww, I'll take that's it. That's cool. I'll take it. Yeah, that's a pleasant little thing. Yeah. All right. So let's just uh, start at the top, I suppose. Where are we? Page 158. The monkeys look at him. This, believe it or not, says one of them, gesturing at the surrounding snow and ice, is the hilltop zone. What? Snow started falling late last night. When we woke up today, it was like this. We split up to find food, shelter, and other survivors, but now we can't even find the others. Then that shark thing attacked. Will you help us, Mr. Tails? Interrupts the smallest monkey. We're very cold and hungry, and we're all fans of you and Sonic. Sonic especially. Oh <laughs> my gosh. They will not <laughs> shut up. They will not drop it. This is ridiculous. Uh, they're just using us to get to Sonic. Yeah, really. Okay, do we agree to help them? Do we refuse? Or do we ask them if they've seen a Chaos Emerald? I want to refuse. We grudgingly agree, <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess we'll agree. Okay, turn to page 94. Of course I'll help, agrees Tails. Any hero would. He sets off towards the mountain peak that looms in the distance, with a mighty glacier making a frozen path to its summit. Tails points to it. That's the easiest way up, he says. From the mountaintop, we'll get the best view to look for your friends. They set off through the drifting snow and the wind. Meanwhile, back in the warmer climate of Scrap Brain City, Sonic is hot and bothered. Oh. <laughs> He's surrounded by sharp sword points, with three very angry animals holding them. One is a large badger, the second is a tall bird wearing glasses, and the third is a young dog, almost a puppy, with pointed ears. Sonic notices a pile of papers on the table, titled Secret Outcast Plans, and he realizes that he must have fallen into a meeting of outcast spies. What's worse is that he knows one of them is an agent for the cats who run the city. <sighs> who are you? Asks the badger in a low, slow voice. What does Sonic reply? Do we say, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, who are you? I'm nobody in particular just passing through, or I'm a spy for the outcasts. Well, I feel like Sonic's pretty proud of who he is, so maybe we can throw that at him. Yeah. All right, turn to page 195. Sonic the Hedgehog, says the bird. <laughs> Not the Sonic the Hedgehog, defender of the Green Hill Zone, savior of planet Mobius. <laughs> the Sonic the Hedgehog who runs around with that cute cuddly fox, asks the dog, putting away his sword. I'm a big fan of his, I mean yours. Oh. oh yeah, what? Boy. There we, we go. We went to the wrong one. That's so funny. <laughs> oh man, we got it. Okay, I want to reverse time and make sure so make sure Tails is here to meet his his one fan. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh man, it's darling. I've never heard of you, mutters the Badger. You have disrupted our meeting. 
Same time tomorrow, everyone. He starts tidying papers. Don't mind him, says the bird. He's always grouchy. I'm number two, and my friend, he points to the dog, is number three. You're number four. I'd rather be Sonic, says Sonic, who's number <laughs> one. You're number four, says the bird sternly. Number one is the badger. We're outcast agents. The rest of the outcasts live in the desert. Galen and the cats won't let them enter the city, so we've sneaked in to prepare for an invasion. Sonic knows that one of the group is a spy for it's Galen, the it's the but he knows that if he chooses wrongly, he'll be talking to the spy. Who does he talk to? Do we talk to number one, number two, number three, or do we ask them what their plans are? Oh my gosh. You know what's horrible? The guy who likes Tails is the spy, isn't he? Because he's not cool and doesn't like Sonic. I want to talk to him, though. He's the guy I trust. Okay. <laughs> number three, the little doji boy. Let's turn to page 253. If you're right, my heart is going to be broken. I'll never be able to recover from this. <laughs> number three is polishing his sword with his tail as Sonic approaches. Hello, he barks. How can I help you, Sonic? I mean, number four. Sonic bends close to one of the dog's ears. I think you should know, he whispers, that one of your friends is actually an informant for Galen and the cats who run the city. Number three looks at him in surprise. An informant? Do you think so? You must have been really clever to work that out because you've only been here a couple of minutes. <laughs> who do you think it is? Or don't you know? What do you do when you find out who it is? I hope it isn't me. Either number three is a brilliant actor or he really is as stupid as he looks. <laughs> Just because he likes tails. Oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sonic can't quite decide. Whichever it is, he knows he's not going to learn much from the dog. What should he do next? Talk to number one, talk to number two, or ask the group what their plans are. Okay, well, the badger's the bad guy. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we should probably talk to number two then and yeah. rat out the badger. Okay, we'll turn to page 126. Ah, oh, number four, says the bird. I'm not a number, I am a hedgehog, shouts Sonic. Oh my. I've got important information for you, so listen up. One of your group is an informant for Galen and the cats running the city. I know, says number two. Every time we try a new plan, the secret police are waiting for us. Last week, we were planning to raid the high tower with the Chaos Emerald in it. Wait a minute, interrupts Sonic. There's one Chaos Emerald here already before I arrived with the second one? I mean, we Galen already that. told us the that, didn't he? The cats told us that. Yes, replies number two. It's the city's power source. You brought another emerald with you? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Deary, deary me. I'll have to think about this. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> okay. Number two sits down to think. What should we do next? Should we talk to the badger or ask what their next plan is? If we say what the plan is in front of the badger, well, he probably already knows what the plan is. Mm -hmm. We'll ask what the plan is. I don't want to talk to the badger. He's absolutely the bad guy. He's a curmudgeon and I hate him. And he mm -hmm. doesn't like tails. Yeah, what a loser. The three spies turn to look at him. Can we trust him? Asks number one. Of course, he's Sonic the Hedgehog, answers number three. Besides, what are the chances of this plan working? Zero, zilch, nothing, something always goes wrong. It can't hurt to tell him. After all, adds number two, Galen probably knows exactly what we're planning. Okay, number four, listen carefully. Of course, it's the one with the terrible voice that has to explain the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap Brain City is located by the Chaos Emerald, kept in the high tower. No, wait, it's powered. Okay, Scrap Brain City is powered by the Chaos Emerald, kept in the high tower. It's closely guarded, but our technical expert, that's me, thinks that if we can isolate the Emerald, we can cut off the power to the city. Then we set off a flare, which is a signal to the outcasts in the desert to attack. We don't want to take over the city or kill all the cats. We just don't think it's fair that they should keep all the power and luxury for themselves while we're stuck out here in the desert with nothing. Give me a second to take a drink. <laughs> These guys got a point. That's fair, I think. Yeah, just distribute the power back to the people. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get into the high tower? Asks Sonic. I haven't worked that out yet, says number two. With Galen's spy around, as soon as I have the plan, he'll know about it. So I was leaving that up until the last moment. Will you help us? Do we agree to help them? Or do we say it's the most harebrained scheme we've ever heard? Let's help them so they don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Page 149. That makes sense, says Sonic. What might happen if they've got two chaos emeralds in the high tower? If they're careful, says number two, everything will be fine. If they're careless, the proximity effect might overload the... Where's number one? What's that chemical smell and hissing sound, says Sonic. Whirr, replies number three, slumping to the floor. Ah, remarks... Oh, ah, remarks number two. Yeah, adds Sonic as black dots dance before his eyes and he passes out. Come when he boy. comes around, he's in a cell with number two and number three. What happened, asks Sonic. We were gassed, answers number three. Number one betrayed us. Now there's a guard outside the door and there's no way we can escape. 
There's always an escape route, says Sonic. Besides, we must warn the ask the outcasts about what we must warn the outcasts about what's going on. What should Sonic do? Search the cell, ask what the others are carrying, or bang on the door? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, we're just we're getting our booties kicked. We've still got three lives left for Sonic, though. Sonic can do no wrong. True. Should we just ask what they're doing? Sure. All right. Turn to page 105. We're gonna MacGyver our way out of the situation. Let's see. Turn out your pockets, Sonic demands. The other two do as they're told, and Sonic watches as they produce the contents. What's this, he asks. That's a copy of the key to the city gates, <laughs> answers number three. <laughs> That's nice. Next to it is a lucky talisman given me by my, by the chief of the outcasts. You can have both of them. Interesting. Okay. If Sonic wants either or both of the items, write them down on his vital statistics. Is that we'll, it, he asks. I'll take them. All right, real quick, I'm going to write down talisman and key. We were searched before they throw us in here, says number three. All we have is the clothes we're wearing. No, wait. From around his waist, he unwinds a length of thin rope. I use it as a belt, he explains. And I've got one gold ring in my pocket. Take it for good luck. All right. So we've got thin rope. And now we have nine rings. Now, do you think we should search the cell or bang on the door? Let's check out this cell. Page 27. The cell is like the one Sonic was in before, with a stone floor and one window set too high to see out of. There's a bed made of planks laid on, brick, laid on piles of bricks covered with a single blanket. In the middle of the ceiling is a large hook. Nothing is hanging from it. It's just there. Sonic and the others check every stone and brick, but there are no secret ways out of this cell. Sonic can ask the other two what they're carrying or bang on the cell door. Alternatively, if he has decided how he wants to escape, he can try the following. We can lasso the hook in the ceiling if we have the rope. We can make a seesaw catapult with the planks and bricks. We can climb up to the window, or we can overpower the guard outside the cell. Now, since we have an option that asks us to use a specific item, the whole if you have this item situation, I think that's probably the one. I agree. That seems like the smart bet. Yep. Okay, let's go to page 76. Sonic takes the rope, makes a loop in one end, and throws it towards the ceiling. After three tries, it lands on the hook, and Sonic climbs up until he's level with the window. It has bars on it, but he can see out. Can you get out of the window? Shouts number three. Sonic tries to reach the windowsill, but it's still too far. He can't swing the rope enough to get to it, and he knows he couldn't jump far enough. Disheartened, he climbs down. I've got an idea, says number two. Sonic can take his advice, or he can try one of his own plans. Do we take the bird's advice, build a seesaw catapult, overpower the guards outside the cell, or climb the walls? I'm ready for some advice. All right, page 201. Number two shakes the rope loose. The rope loose. If you can loop the middle of the rope over the hook, you can hold onto the loop while number three and I pull you up to the window. You'll be able to swing across it that way. Sonic nods. It doesn't explain how I get through the bars on the window, he says, but it's a start. Looping the rope over the hook takes ages, but eventually it slips over. Number two and number three haul on the rope, lifting Sonic up until he's level with the window. He starts to sway the rope slowly at first, and then more and more until finally he grabs the bars to the window. He's there. Turn to page five. Page five? Yeah. Ooh. That's so early. Interesting. I know. <laughs> it always throws me through a loop when we hit the early pages. Sonic is standing on the ledge by the cell window. Outside is the city, bathed in early evening light. But unfortunately, there are strong iron bars in the way. To bend the bars far enough for him to squeeze his hedgehog body through, Sonic must roll on his strength to beat an eight. Ooh. Ew. Oh, What's oh, our no. strength? Plus it's a three. two. Or two. Oh. So, so we, we gotta, gotta roll a six. six. All right. Hey, we it's all good six. Now. Oh, dear. I believe in you. I got a three. Uh, uh, if he fails, the bars are too strong and he falls back into the cell exhausted. He lands on the seesaw plank, snapping it in two. <gasps> now he can't try that trick again. Dang it. Should he climb the walls of the cell, overpower the guard outside the cell, or if he has some rope, lasso this hook in the ceiling with it? Hmm. I guess we just try and beat up the guard. That seems like the best option, yeah? Get him. All right, page 133. I think we're thinking too much. We just need to go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, gotta yeah. go fast. Simply must. There's one problem with overpowering the guard. The solid door between him and Sonic. The hedgehog hammers on it. A little trapdoor in it slides open, and an ugly guard peers in. I don't want any trouble from you, says the guard, or I'll show you real trouble. Now shut up. I'm trying to get some sleep. The trapdoor slides shut. What mm -hmm. now? Sonic Jeez. can attract the guard's attention again, climb up the wall towards the window, make a seesaw catapult, except we broke it, or we can yep. try and lasso the hook. Um, I say we try and wake the guard up again. Yeah. All right. Don't let him Page sleep. 68. Get him when he's sleep deprived. 
Mm -hmm. What can we do, says Sonic. If he opens the doors, I might be able to dash past him. He turns to number two. Pretend you're really ill, he whispers. <gasps> number two looks at him quizzically, then starts moaning and groaning. Oh, oh, oh. He goes, my stomach, oh, it hurts. There's a rattling sound from the door. What's going on? Demands the ugly guard, appearing in the entrance. You must be fit for your execution, so if you're sick... He steps forward, and Sonic darts between his legs and into the corridor, running as fast as he can. Yeah. He hurtles along the corridors and down any stairways that don't lead to dead ends. Finally, he dives through a door to find himself in an alley outside the prison. Turn to page 91. Dang it, Sonic just can't seem to catch a break, can he? How is he going to make it out of this mess? You'll just have to wait and find out next time for our third episode of Sonic the Hedgehog Adventure Game Book 2 Zone Rangers by James Wallace, which, speaking of James Wallace, I just want to share with you a little tidbit, a little fun fact that I learned about James Wallace. Uh, James Wallace has been involved in the RPG industry for quite a while. After he initially wrote this book, uh, he started working on various other RPGs RPGs, various other writings, and one of the things that he was involved in was back in 1986, he got together with a group of friends and set the Guinness World Record for an endurance play of Advanced D&D, the longest D&D session at 84 hours, played non-stop. Uh, he is on record as saying that they were starting to hallucinate by the end of it. Uh, you know, I admire your tenacity, James Wallace, and I admire your writing. Thanks for the wonderful things you've brought to the world. Thanks to Caleb for editing this episode, and thanks to you, our dear listeners, especially to our patrons who are making this all possible. What's going to happen to Sonic next time, we'll find out. But until then, much love and stuff, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Improv Tabletop. Mm -hmm.